Mafia Music Network. Offering underground, pop, and esoteric cinema. Discover more at MovieAndMusicNetwork.com. Alice Howland is a married linguistics professor with three grown children. When she starts to forget things, she goes to her doctor for an evaluation. I can see the words hanging in front of me and I can't reach them and I don't know who I am and, and I don't know what I'm gonna lose next. There she discovers she is in the early stages of early onset Alzheimer's in Still Alice. Hi, I'm Kevin and I'm here with Zoriana and Liz and we're here today to talk about Still Alice, the new Julianne Moore film. We've all just seen it, Liz, what did you think? I thought it was a simple and beautiful film. I really thought it was engrossing in terms of Julianne Moore's performance. I think it's pretty obvious that it was a fantastic performance by her. My problems with the film all revolved around the fact that I'm supposed to believe that Kristen Stewart's a great actress because she's supposed to play a great actress in this movie. She's not a great actress in the movie. But she's, she's supposed so to be pivotal. She's to so be pivotal in this movie, and I didn't understand why she was cast when I think her range and her breadth are just not there in this movie because everything else is just the limit in terms of emotionality, and then I just get everything flat when I see Kristen Stewart. So that's really what dragged the film down for me was Kristen Stewart. I actually really liked Kristen Stewart, and I like her in indie movies. I don't like her in the big budget blockbuster stuff because I don't think she's right for it. But I actually really liked her here, but what I found, what I thought would have been a more interesting movie is just their relationship. Mm -hmm. Because they kept on cutting to Kate Bosworth. I'm like, I don't care about her. The, her, her character was one note. I didn't care about the Alec Baldwin character because that just seemed false. I agree. But <laughs> I thought whenever they got Kristen Stewart, but they almost, they didn't set it up enough. And every time they would get together, I was I thought it was really dynamic. I'm going to stay away from the <laughs> Kristen Stewart, do we love her, do we hate her? Because that's an entire I episode. I like her. We could just talk itself. about it forever, yeah. <laughs> but I think that particular character serves a purpose from the standpoint that in Julianne Moore's extremely perfect life, she has the one blemish is that she doesn't approve of her daughter's career, and uh, she uh, would like her daughter to have a more respectable profession, like everyone else in the family. And the irony is, is that when she is sick, that it's this daughter is the one who seems to be most sympathetic, who is going mm -hmm. to become the caregiver, and who finally they sort of rebuild and reconstruct their relationship. So from that standpoint, yes, there could have been a movie just focusing on a mother-daughter aspect. Like, what does it actually feel like? Mm, well, it's not always the same. You know, I have, uh, I have good days, bad days, and on my good days, I can, you know, almost pass for a normal person. But on my bad days, I feel like I can't find myself. To me, it's all Julianne Moore. I mean, this is a performance that another actress could have made, you know, very hysterical or made it really uh, melodramatic. And this is a very restrained performance, mm. very subtle. She is fully in control here, and, and it's completely Oscar worthy. And that's the reason to see this movie is because of this amazing performance. Absolutely. But that is the only reason to see this movie. It's yeah. unfortunate because, you know, that the script seemed very predictable. It was pretty kind of trite. I knew exactly where it was going the whole time. It's based on a book, a best-selling yeah. book. Um, but it just it felt like a movie of the week. The music, as we've talked about, it was just, it was a pretty theme, but the theme was repeated so often that every time it started, I started to laugh. A, a traditional movie of the week would have focused on how it affects the family, how it affects everyone around you. But but this one, it really focused on Julianne Moore, how this one woman is coping with mm -hmm. memory loss. And I really liked how the focus went on the victim, for lack of a better word, rather than on, oh, woe, woe are us, like we're losing our mom. I think I like this film a little bit more than you too. And what I enjoyed about it, I agree, I agree it's predictable. Every scene, I was like, I know what's gonna happen. And it's a little simplistic. But in that simplicity, I liked the original take of having two very scientific minded people go through this very emotional experience. Yes. And that's uh -huh. what and that's that originality is what drew me in. It wasn't it wasn't the supporting characters, it wasn't the subplot, anything to do with Alec Baldwin totally <laughs> took me out of the enjoyment of the film. But it was that I see Julianne Moore do everything right. Uh, she, you know, she's doing crossword puzzles, she's doing words with friends, and she's um, running every day and she's being healthy. And then it's like looking at someone who has done everything in her life to combat something like this and seeing the degradation of her mind in spite of that.
Directors Wash Westmoreland and Richard Glatzer, they did a very basic job in directing. Yeah. There's not a lot of filmmaking flair, mm -hmm. but what they did write was put the camera on Julianne Moore's face and just kind of let it be. I mean, when you have someone like Julianne Moore, you really just, just do need to let the camera shine <laughs> on them and they'll do the rest because she really does. And this way, it's almost like Julianne Moore is our point of view in walking us through this disease and this deterioration, and that's what I appreciated about the directing. And also, it's like this film is is up there with, it's not, not in terms of quality up there with Wild or something like Cake, but it's still one of these, it's now in a series of films about women going through very painful, uh, dramatic, compelling experiences. Julianne Moore and I think Kristen Stewart are terrific here. But it feels a little movie of the week, and I don't know if it's worth really spending $50 out at a night at the movies, so I'm going to say stream it. Oscar-worthy performance makes this movie a must-see, but it doesn't have to be on the big screen, so I say stream it. A patient script and a fantastic performance by Julianne Moore are worth more than the film's foibles. See it. Well, our votes add up to two full tickets, which is a stream it for Still Alice. She is to an Oscar nomination for Julianne oh. Moore. Oh, yeah, you guys are like sunlight <laughs> sparkles now.